When I was a kid, the Super Nintendo was considered groundbreaking technology, especially when you paired it with Jolt Cola and an all-nighter playing Contra. But now, if you compare those graphics alongside today's latest gaming systems, it's almost laughable. But that change in technology happened incrementally over 30 years. However, quantum computing could create a tectonic shift in advancements, where that same 30 years worth of changes could happen in a mere couple of years instead of decades. Despite making a video on quantum stocks just a few months ago, a lot has changed. The quantum space continues its rapid evolution with a few more companies added to the mix. The development in quantum computing holds the potential to redefine the limits of computation, and new innovations often result in investment opportunities. Granted, we are all waiting for the markets to finally bottom out in hopefully the next few months. And when that happens, then we expect the areas of massive potential, like quantum computing, to get back on track to having strong growth. And I am making it a point to keep investing in this area with just small amounts because, well, I can't pass up a good discount. But let's talk about the sheer scale of this opportunity. The quantum computing market is not just a niche area. It's poised for substantial growth over the next decade with a CAGR of 31% out to 2032. In my prior video, I had outlined how quantum computing companies are essentially broken out into three main groups, where you have architects, companies focused on developing the physical quantum computers themselves and are considered pure play quantum companies. Then we have integrators, which are companies creating the infrastructure, often software and hardware, to support quantum computing and bridge it with classical systems. And the last are facilitators, companies providing access to quantum computing resources via cloud platforms, making it scalable and broadly accessible. And I think you're gonna see how this plays out when I review each of these different companies. It isn't easy to rank these these companies because so many of them lack having all the financials. But I do create my own form of ranking, and I will speak to that further on at the end within my summary. But I will say that I give my ranking based on the objective outcome, but I'll also give my point of view too. And I also want to point out that I did pay for some substantial research on quantum computing, where I now have several reports on both the public and private companies in this space with very detailed information. And if you want to read it, I will gladly provide it for free in next week's newsletter. Our first company is our at Quantum, where they provide security solutions through their specialized encryption software called Quantum Cloud and SKA Platform, which employ a symmetric key agreement to deliver robust protection against both conventional and quantum-based cyber attacks. Notably, their technology adheres to the National Security Agency, or NSA, standards for classified communications, underscoring its significance for high security applications. The market's positive reaction to events like NVIDIA's GTC suggests a growing recognition for the importance of quantum security solutions. I'll make certain to end each of the companies with their analyst forecast. And in this case, Arc at Quantum is listed with over 200% upside over 12 months. Obviously, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Given our softness in the market right now, I get the sense that these forecasts will have a lot of revisions over the next four months. So take it with a grain of salt. All of these innovative companies rely on the same resource power generation. That's where today's sponsor, Jericho Energy Ventures, comes into play. They're providing clean, efficient natural gas solutions crucial for powering AI data centers. Currently, with the existence of platforms like ChatGPT and Gemini, global data center energy consumption is expected to double by 2026. Jericho Energy has oil and gas operations in Oklahoma, their core business, and a high potential hydrogen division. An upcoming hydrogen spinoff, likely around their next annual meeting in June or July, will give shareholders shares in both companies, unlocking multiples of more value. Both divisions are growing, with positive hydrogen news expected soon, and the oil and gas business benefiting from U.S. policies and the fact that they are 100% domestic solution to our energy needs. Jericho is backed by strong shareholders, including Ed Breen, a chairman of DuPont, and Andrew McKenna, an influential Washington A-lister who purchased over 32 million shares. Jericho Energy is a growing oil and gas company and a high potential hydrogen company. Feel free to check out the link down in the description to learn more about Jericho Energy Ventures, which is a domestic source of clean energy for our data centers while all trading under $1. Next, we have IBM, where their work centers on superconducting qubits, a technology they have been developing for over a decade, resulting in increasingly sophisticated processors like the Eagle with 127 qubits, Osprey with 433 qubits, and the anticipated Condor with over a thousand qubits. A key innovation is their IBM Quantum System 2, 
a modular architecture with the potential to scale to over 16,000 qubits. Designed as a step towards practical quantum computation by integrating quantum processors with classical computing resources in a paradigm that they call quantum-centric supercomputing. And analysts are giving IBM only 3.8% upside in their forecast, which is only slightly above their dividend, which is 2.69%. Then we have Alphabet through its dedicated Google Quantum AI division, which is growing in this quantum space. Alphabet's research has yielded notable advancements in quantum hardware, such as the Sycamore processor and more recently, the Willow chip, which represents a substantial leap forward in tackling the critical challenge of quantum error correction. Complementing their hardware efforts, they're also constructing a comprehensive suite of software tools and exploring a hybrid method of simulating complex physical systems. Analysts are very generous with Alphabet giving them over 30% upside for the year. Our next company is IonQ and is known for its specialization in trapped ion technology, a method recognized for its high qubit fidelity. As the highest funded pure play quantum computing company, IonQ has garnered significant attention for its advancements in building practical quantum systems. Their current generation of quantum computers, such as the IonQ Forte with 36 algorithmic qubits, are accessible to a wide range of users through their quantum computing as a service model, available on major cloud platforms, including Microsoft Azure and Amazon Bracket. IonQ is also pioneering innovations in compact room temperature quantum computing with novel vacuum technology, aiming to reduce the energy consumption and complexity of these advanced machines. In addition, they're actively pursuing advancements in quantum networking through collaborations, like their project with the Air Force Research Lab. I am a little shocked that analysts are giving this pure play stock a forecast of over 67%, given just how much it climbed in the past year. It does seem a little bit lofty, but there is potential, and this is one of the most popular companies in this space. Now we'll move on to Form Factor, which plays a critical, albeit less visible, role in the advancement of quantum computing by providing essential infrastructure for the development and testing of these advanced systems. They specialize in cryogenic test and measurement solutions, which are indispensable for engineers working with the extremely low temperatures that are required by many quantum technologies, particularly superconducting qubits. Their equipment enables precise testing and validation of quantum devices, ensuring the functionality and the performance of these delicate processors. They definitely are not the architects, but they support everyone else in the sector, which I happen to appreciate a little bit more now that I've done the research. Analysts have a forecast for form factor at 36% upside for the next 12 months. Now I'm going to move on to Booz Allen Hamilton Holding Corporation, operating as a consulting firm with a growing presence in the quantum computing sector. Their significance arises from their role in providing strategic guidance and expertise in quantum information science to various different clients, particularly within the government. While not directly producing quantum hardware or software, Booz Allen Hamilton is exploring and advising on the application of quantum solutions across diverse industries, such as health sciences and finance. I personally believe that consulting will have a lot of room for growth because there simply will not be enough experts in each of the companies to leverage the technology on their own. Analysts see them with a lot of upside of over 45%. The next company, MicroCloud Hologram, is exploring the intersection of holographic technology with advanced computing paradigms including quantum mechanics and artificial intelligence. Recently, Hollow has achieved advancements in high-precision quantum state preparation using matrix product states, reportedly yielding a substantial increase in computational efficiency. The company is also investigating continuous variable quantum neural networks for applications in quantum artificial intelligence, and has reported progress in optimizing digital simulated quantum computing. This is a company where I had several different viewers call it out in my last video but there is so little information on them that I can't give them a lot of credibility that I do to all the others simply because I can't get to all their financials. And there may be a reason why it's down negative 81% year to date. I am merely sharing that it is a player in this space, but you will see how it ranks in the end. Next is Rigetti Computing, which focuses on superconducting qubit technology, taking a comprehensive full stack approach 
that includes designing and manufacturing their own quantum processing units alongside cloud-based services. Rigetti's technological progress is noted with its launch of processors like the 84-qubit Anka 3 system, featuring high fidelity, and the Novera QPU available for direct purchase. In addition, Rigetti has made strides in a critical area by achieving real-time quantum error correction on their systems. And analysts give them a lot of runway with an upside of over 61% over the next 12 months. Next, we have Microsoft via its Azure Quantum Platform, which provides access to a diverse range of quantum hardware and software solutions from several different companies. A key aspect of their approach is the research and development of topological qubits, theorized to be inherently more stable and less prone to errors. Exemplified by their Majorana 1 chip, They've established partnerships with pure play quantum companies like IonQ and Continuum, making their systems available through Azure, and are also collaborating with companies like Atom Computing, even delivering on-premise systems together. Microsoft's strategy is to offer up several different options on Azure, as well as pursuing their own hardware. For its size, Microsoft has analysts excited with over 31% goodness. And given its slightly negative 2024, this may be a good year for them. Next is NVIDIA, which is clearly known for having high-performance GPUs and are increasingly essential for the computationally intensive task of simulating quantum systems, aiding in the design and testing of these new machines. NVIDIA's development of the QQuantum SDK provides a specialized toolkit that further accelerates this simulation process, becoming a valuable resource for researchers and developers. While not fabricating quantum processors themselves, NVIDIA's infrastructure acts as a critical enabler by providing the tools for others to succeed. NVIDIA has some of the best fundamentals out there, and their forecast shows it with over 55% upside. The next company is Honeywell, which isn't directly working in the quantum space, but rather through its majority ownership of Quantinuum, a major integrated quantum computing company formed by the merger of Honeywell Quantum Solutions and Cambridge Quantum. Quantinuum specializes in trapped ion technology, pursuing a path focused on achieving high fidelity qubits and effective error correction. Their approach has yielded advanced H-series quantum processors, recognized for their performance and progress towards fault-tolerant computing. While Honeywell itself does not directly offer quantum computers, its strategic investment and ongoing stake in Quantinuum gives them a lot of room on the table. And analysts show Honeywell with over 9% upside, and they do have an added bonus of a dividend of over 2%. Next, we have Intel, who is developing silicon spin qubits. This approach is significant as it aims for scalable and potentially cost-effective quantum processors by leveraging existing high-volume production techniques. Intel has produced the Tunnel Falls research chip to explore this technology further. Their efforts includes creating control chips like Horse Ridge 2 to better integrate with quantum processors, and a long-term vision of building systems with a vast number of qubits. I think a lot of you know that I'm not a huge fan of Intel, but a new CEO is a good start, and it would be ideal if they sold off that foundry's business, which would greatly improve their business model. And within its current situation, analysts see them with a negative 1.7% downside for the year. Our next company is Seals SQ, and it specializes in quantum-safe crypto photography and semiconductors. Their core mission involves developing post-quantum technology hardware and software designed to protect digital infrastructure from future quantum-based cyber attacks. They have a significant reach with its existing hybrid cryptographic model securing billions of devices globally. You should now be seeing a little bit of a clear trend with quantum cryptography and cybersecurity. Analysts see them with over 100% upside, which is often easier to achieve when they're such a small company. Next is Amazon and their AWS Bracket, where this platform acts as a central hub, providing users with cloud-based access to a diverse range of quantum computing hardware from companies like IonQ, Rigetti, and D-Wave. Bracket offers a hardware-agnostic environment equipped with developer tools, including SDKs and pre-designed algorithms, simplifying the process of experimenting with quantum computation. Notably, Amazon is also developing its own quantum computer chip, with a focus on improved error correction, signaling a move towards controlling the underlying hardware. Amazon, Microsoft, and Google 
They're all using the same playbook within this area. Amazon's 12 month forecast from analysts is over 34%. Next, we have D-Wave, which has created a focus on quantum annealing technology, a method particularly adept at tackling complex optimization problems. As an early commercializer of quantum systems, their specialized processors, such as the Advantage system boasting over 5,000 qubits, have found practical applications across various industries. D-Wave provides access to their quantum annealing capabilities through their Leap Cloud service and also offers on-premise hardware. D-Wave is a pure play company, but analysts only see them with 16% upside for the year. Next, we have quantum computing, which is unique by developing photonic quantum computing systems designed to operate at room temperature, offering a departure from the cryogenic requirements of so many of the other different approaches. Their focus is on creating more accessible and affordable quantum solutions that can potentially integrate with current IT infrastructure. A key aspect of their technology involves fabricating photonic computing engines using thin film lithium niobate at their specialized foundry. Their Dirac 3 machine functions as a photonic optimization solver and has been utilized in collaboration with organizations like NASA for quantum remote sensing applications. And the analyst projections are limited, but I did find one at 11%. I believe that I have covered an extensive list of companies within the quantum space. And in attempting to rank them, I created a framework that I'll put on the screen so you can understand my attempt to be as objective as I can. And when I mapped out all the information in a spreadsheet, it was pretty massive. I also created a separate spreadsheet that maps out all the different technologies between companies to create a little bit of a cheat sheet amongst all of them. And as always, I do have my usual spreadsheet down in the description that has all these companies and a lot of that information so you can see it all at once. In the end, this resulted in having the mega cap companies rising quite a bit to the top because they have such strong financials. And you can see by the ranking how all of those pure play quantum companies turned out. And honestly, it didn't surprise me all that much. And if I were to rank them off the cuff, I tend to have a very similar outcome. Granted, you can see my portfolio that I share in my newsletter if you're ever curious which ones I actually choose to invest in. Now, I realize I'm showing you a lot of charts and information, which I will gladly share to everyone in my newsletter for free. I highly recommend that you do your own research, but I believe that the resources that I have pulled together are very high end and better than most any other resource you're gonna find for free. As always, thanks so much for watching.